Hey guys, it's Cassie and today we are going to be talking about Bottega Veneta if we want to do the correct pronunciation. So it is no secret that Bottega has been enjoying much success and popularity over the last few years. Um, I don't think it is too bold of me to say that Daniel Lee really took the brand in a completely different direction than the brand was before. Daniel Lee joined the brand in 2018, okay? And to give a little bit of context, Bottega was nowhere to be found on in the top 20 of hottest designer brands around that time it took a year for them to break the top 20 and they reigned in the top 10 of hottest designer brands up until Mattia Blasey's first collection for the brand where they dropped to number 17 now they're back up at number 11 but undoubtedly Bottega is one of the hottest trending brands at the moment now what i want to talk about is that there's definitely been a change in aesthetics and priorities within the brand since its new creative director and i want to have a little bit of a deep dive into that what the outcomes have been where do we see things going so on and so forth via the handbags which is one of the ways that the majority of us will experience the brand guys if you're new here my name is cassie and i'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict i put out videos on mondays wednesdays and fridays so if you like luxury fashion then you're gonna love it here so head down there subscribe turn on the bell become a member of our luxury addicted family when are we going to rehab <coughs> never guys are you ready let's go all right i want to start off with Bottega under Daniel Lee like i said he really put the brand back on the map for a lot of people and part of that was Bottega was an it bag machine they just kept turning out trending after trending after trending bags shoes as well but i really want to focus on the bags in this video because i think that is um a way that a lot of us would have experienced the brand and also i'm sure it is the part of the brand that is the most lucrative i by the way this is all just me and my theories and my speculation i do have some facts to back me up which i shall tell you as we go through but i just wanted to sort of share my thoughts on this now now, to name a few of those it bags, you've got the mini Jodie, the cassette, the padded cassette, the padded Jodie, the double knot, the point. It literally feel, felt as though every single bag Bottega put out was going to be photographed a hell of a lot at the fashion weeks. It was going to be on every sort of like fashionista's arm. We were going to see it throughout the pages of Vogue and X, Y, and Z. They just had that formula and it was working for them and i feel like a lot of people fell in love with new Bottega this fresher feel that still felt very close to the brand and very much had those traits of Bottega and the codes of the house that people knew before that intrecciato weave we know that leather is very much at the core of what Bottega does their craftsmanship and quality as well now rumors of a toxic work environment under Daniel Lee meant that Daniel was out and Mattia Blasey um, was announced at the end of 2021 as being the new creative director. Now he showed his first collection for autumn winter 2022 back in February. And there was a lot of question as, will this winning streak for Bottega continue? Will this formula for the bags keep churning out these popular, trending, fabulous pieces? Or are we going to see a complete shift in the vibe of Bottega? And just to give you an idea of success, between I think 2019 and 2020, Bottega saw a revenue sales growth of like 30 something percent. Between 2020 and 2021, they saw a growth of 25 percent. It's all been going well for them. Autumn Winter 2022 debuted and we saw a very different take on Bottega and the vibe for the brand now I would say is very much more casual luxury. Very if you know you know. Taking very sort of simple casual pieces but having them made in an exceptional way for example there was a pair of jeans that came down the runway spanner in the works not jeans actually entirely leather tank top looked like cotton no it wasn't it was leather which is definitely a shift from new old new Bottega that we saw before it and I think that the bags on the runway reflected that too so I'm going to go through a couple of the designs that we saw on the runway so we saw the sardine bag very much the same vibe as the uh, YSL's Mombasa bag the intrecciato weave sort of hobo style with this 
fish handle. Tosca bag, shoulder bag moment with a sort of gold ball hardware as the fasten. The pad bag, for those of you that have always wished to carry around your pillowcase with you at all times. Bottega to begin with, and I even think with new Bottega, is very, there aren't any logos. It doesn't need the logos. Its characteristics lie in the styles and in the techniques used as opposed to the logos um, and the branding side of things. Another bag that was also debuted on the runway for autumn winter 2022 is the Calamera bag that looks like slinging over your shoulder to go to the well to get water, right? I mean, logistically, this bag makes very little sense to me. Um, it's also not a style I would go for, but that's not what we're discussing today. We also saw a new take on an old classic, the knot bag. The knot was changed in a slightly different way and it came out in this plissé sort of intrecciato weave. When this collection actually dropped, came out, was available to buy, it dropped alongside new variations of some of our new favourites. The sets, the um, Jodies, all of that done in slightly different variations, little tweaks, um, different textures, fabrics, all of that colours. Same thing happened for the new pre-spring 2023 collection that has just come out. New styles have been introduced, just to cover a few of those, you've got this sort of shoulder bag that I can see some people thinking is like the most chic thing in the world, it's very sort of the row. Just sort of nondescript leather sack with a gold handle. The brick cassette, which is a sort of shoulder bag, I can see that being, that's a nice bag. There's this also, also sort of bulbous one that sort of, that looks like an old leather football. I don't know, from like the 70s. There was another variation of the Calimera with a top handle and it has also dropped as a double Calimera in case your one pail of water for the well is not enough and you need two. And again, dropped amongst variations of the old new Bottega favourites. Stick with me. Now, another big part of Bottega has always been the quality aspect. They've always put a lot of focus on the craftsmanship, on the way that these pieces are made. And interestingly enough, there is a guy that I've come across on TikTok, I can't remember his name, but I will insert him here, who deconstructs loads of leather items and tells you whether or not they're actually made well and what they're worth and all of that. And I believe he did this to the Arco tote and he was impressed with the amount of leather and work that went into the bag. And they've recently announced a lifetime warranty program that will start from the 1st of November and will be a physical card that comes along with your bag purchase that's like, whatever happens to it, if it needs some TLC or if something's broken, blah, 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 you bring it into us, we sort it out. You would hope that I standard practice in luxury. It's not, but again, it's another example of them standing by their quality. And because we talk about luxury and we can't talk about luxury without price increases, they have also been experiencing some price increases too. When it comes to Bottega, the amount of intrecciato we basically, my theory is the smaller the weave, the more expensive the bag. That's not a theory, Cassie, that's just true. If you look at something like the Tosca bag, that's like $8,000 or something because there's a lot of leather involved in there. But I will say something about Bottega that they do have quite a wide range of pricing, which in that way is good. I do think there has been a change in the style of bags being released from the brand. I think it has become even more low key than it was and even then I don't think it was a particularly like shouty brand but it's definitely a bit more noticeable. I think that they've definitely scaled back even in terms of the use of colours, especially on the runway, it's a lot more muted and I think that while there will always be people who will appreciate that aspect of it, the under the radar, the if you know you know, they're, the, they're the, probably the same people that will buy the row, you know? I see you, I recognise you, I love your style. It's very sort of old money style, if you get my drift. My style, on the other hand, is very lottery winner, shall we say. And there's also that that aspect of craftsmanship that comes with Bottega, maybe a little bit more than even some of the other luxury brands, which is people really appreciate that aspect um, of it and will love those pieces like the Calimero and those really, really delicate, tiny and weaves. But 
from that kind of popular consumer point of view, I think the smartest thing they've done is to keep churning out more and more variations of those old new Bottega <laughs> pieces that we've been loving. The pouch, the cassette, the Arco, the um, Jody, all of those. To keep doing those and in the vast variety of variations that they've been doing them in is the smartest thing for Bottega to keep experiencing the growth that I think they have. I think that they do a great job of keeping those designs fresh because unlike other luxury brands where they have a style and they'll maybe just do it in different colours or, you know, some slightly different textures, but the same sort of textures that we see from the brand before. If I'm thinking of something like Chanel, you're always going to find a tweed variation, um, you're always going to find a jersey foot variation, and a leather one. Anything else in between that is, you know, a little bit rare. But I think Bottega do a very good job of introducing some, like, very out-of-the-box, very different textures and fabrics. If we look at something like this, odd little metallic chlorophyll whatever that is, patent leather this thing, that is something that you would only really find at Bottega. And I think that also plays into why we haven't grown as tired of these styles as we would have from other brands. Because there's such a wide variety, you're going to see so many different types and variations of these bags within the same style. It always keeps things a bit interesting. So whilst I don't think that the Calimero and those sorts of newer bag styles are going to be the cash cows for Bottega, I think it will be interesting to see where they land on the hottest brands list throughout the year. Their sales figures under a new creative director, especially when you introduce that lifetime warranty. Let me know what you think about the new sort of direction that Bottega has taken and the bags that have come along with that and whether they will be able to keep the same level of success and popularity that they've been enjoying for the last few years. Let me know what you think. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are and in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I will see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.